북한 생태계 업데이트입니다. 아, 북한에도 스타트업 생태계가 있다니 전 이번 아젠다를 보고 정말 깜짝 놀랐는데요. 저 북한에서 2008년부터 워크샵, 멘토링 등을 직접 진행해 오신 조선 익스체인지 이한 베네님을 소개합니다. 어, 나중에 이렇게 뭐 북한 쪽이랑 사업 이런 데 관심 있으신 분들은 쉬는 시간에 이렇게 말도 거시고 이렇게 인사를 해보시면 정말 좋지 않을까 생각하는데요. 이한님은 이후 패널 토크에 참석하시지 않는 관계로 발표가 끝나면 바로 질문을 받을 예정입니다. 강연 중 제가 한국어로 간단하게 요약을 해드릴 예정이니까요. 보시면서 궁금한 점은 바로바로 바로 이렇게 심플로우에 올려주시면 될것 같습니다. 네, 그럼 서문이 길었는데요. 특별히 영어로 한번 맞이해 보겠습니다. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ian Bennett, and I am program director at Chosun Exchange. First of all, I'd like to apologize for speaking in English. Although I've spent a lot of time in both North and South Korea, my Korean is not as good as it should be. Thank you for your understanding. 네, 조선 익스체인지 프로그램이 디렉터를 맡고 있는 이한 베넷입니다. 한국어로 발표가 어려운 점 양해 좀 부탁드립니다. So, let me start by introducing Chosun Exchange. We are a Singapore-based non-profit organization which has been working to build the startup ecosystem inside North Korea since 2010. During this time, we have trained over 2,600 entrepreneurs within North Korea and have brought 100 North Korean startup entrepreneurs to Singapore for business training. What we do is unique and, you might say, unlikely especially in a planned economy with supposedly full employment and, of course, very tight sanctions. Yet we persevere through many successes and some difficulties. I'd like to talk to you today about what we have learned about the North Korean startup scene over the last nine years. 네, 조선 익스체인지는 싱가포르 기반의 비영리 기구로 2010년부터 북한의 스타트업 생태계 활성화를 위해 노력해 왔습니다. 정치 외교 상황을 생각하면 참 어려운 과제인데요. 9년간의 노력을 지금부터 들려드리도록 하겠습니다. So our main work in North Korea is running workshops for startup entrepreneurs and small to medium-sized businesses. We bring experts from around the world to share their expertise at workshops in Pyongyang, Pyongsong, and other cities. These workshop leaders are volunteers, and they come from a diverse range of backgrounds. We've had senior managers from companies like Facebook, uh, The Economist. We've had inspirational speakers, academics, architects, and so on. Each person brings a unique set of experiences. They teach practical advice about what does and doesn't work in the wider world of business. This is a lot more valuable than the pure theory that can be found in the textbooks that the state allows. The workshops are very popular with the Korean participants. We usually get between 100 to 150 people at each workshop. 네, 주요 업무 중 하나는 뭐 이코노미스트, 페이스북, 뭐 성공한 창업자분들이 자원봉사로 참여한 워크샵인데요. 뭐 되는지 안 되는지 이런 것들까지 다 한번 검토해 볼수 있다고 하네요. 매번 100명 이상이 신청하는 정도로 인기가 많습니다. In addition to our in-country workshops, we also sponsor some of the most promising entrepreneurs to join us on study programs in Singapore. So they're away from their usual environments, and for many of them, it's the first time outside of North Korea. They study with us on a three-month mini MBA program where they learn a range of business skills, and we place them with leading Singapore incubators. We try to emphasize learning while doing, rather than just pure classroom-based teaching. And many of the alumni of these mini MBA programs have gone on to reteach what they have learned to others in North Korea through coaching and mentorship. 네, 소수 인원을 어, 선발해서 실무 위주의 싱가포르 미니 MBA 프로그램도 제공을 하는데요. 뭐 3개월이고요. 참여자들은 북한에 돌아가서 배운 것들을 다시 전수하기도 합니다. 
So this slide is taken from uh, the Kaufman Fellow, Victor Huang's book. Uh, it's called The Rainforest, The Secret to Building the Next Silicon Valley. And it shows all of the elements that need to be in place for a startup culture to thrive. Now, I don't want to pretend to you that North Korea is the next Silicon Valley, but the same factors do exist there in varying degrees compared to other places. And it's worth considering for a while which of them are present and which need development. So you need leaders. Um, you need the people with the reputation and commitment to drive the ecosystem. You need stakeholders, entrepreneurs, investors, service providers, and so on. You need a regulatory framework and a functioning legal system. You need resources to get the startup products built, and you need to enable the activities which drive collaboration and interest. You need your stakeholders to be engaged as well, and you need role models to inspire other people. Finally, you need a functioning infrastructure and a culture which is motivated to allow startups to succeed. Now, as I said before, the strengths of each of these factors vary across the different provinces in North Korea. Access to resources and infrastructure is obviously going to be higher in Pyongyang than in Ryangyang province, for example. Like in any country, not all areas are equally suitable for nurturing a startup ecosystem. But I'd like to give you today one example of one area which has many of these factors and which we consider to have great potential. 네, 빅터 황의 레인포레스트 캔버스에는 리더, 참여자, 프레임워크, 자원, 활동, 참여, 롤모델, 인프라, 문화 등 스타트업 생태계 조성에 필요한 아홉 대 요소가 나오는데요. 북한의 각 지역도 요건상 차이가 나고요. 그리고 그 중에서 좀 괜찮은 지역을 하나 소개를 해드리려고 합니다. So the place I'd like to talk about is called Unjong Park. This is a special economic zone which is next to Pyeongsong. And it gives some insights, for me at least, into what a positive North Korean startup future might look like. It's also somewhere where we regularly hold Chosun Exchange workshops. So the facilities in this park, they focus on IT, industrial equipment, and trading. There's these modern accommodation blocks for families. There's schools, restaurants, sports facilities. In a lot of ways, it feels like a university campus, um, more than a business hub, perhaps. Uh, so it's currently spread over 100 hectares, so 300,000 Pyong or something. But there's plans to double it in size over the next few years. 네, 북한의 은정 구역은 IT, 바이오 등에 특화된 과학원 관할 지역으로 과학자들과 기술자들이 집중적으로 모여 있고요. 어, 이제 곧두 배가 될 예정이라고 하네요. So, Unjong Park is it's as I said, it's 30 kilometers north of Pyongyang and very close to uh, Pyongyang Sunan International Airport. It's got good road and rail connections and there's frequent buses to Pyongyang, privately run buses. Pyongsong is one of the most vibrant trading towns in the country, actually, because it's a natural meeting point for traders from the whole area and for anyone who actually doesn't, they don't need a permit to get that far. To visit Pyongyang, you would need a permit, but to go to Pyongsong, it acts as, a, it's become this trading hub. 네, 은정 구역은 평양과 선안 공항에서 각각 30km 거리 정도고요. 그리고 버스, 철도 교통 등이 괜찮은 좋은 지역이라고 합니다. 그래서 평소홍은 평양 출입 허가가 없는 사람들이 모일 수 있는 활발한 무역 지대입니다. So we started working with uh, with Unjong Park in 2014 and that was the same year that it was designated a special economic zone. We ran our first workshop with them that year, followed up by a four-month MBA program in Singapore and Malaysia. As sanctions tightened, we then encouraged them to focus on goods and services for the domestic North Korean market. 어, 네, 은정 구역이 특수 경제 지역으로 지정된 2014년에 처음 이제 워크숍이랑 해외 프로그램으로 이뤄진 거시적 프로그램을 진행을 했습니다. So having returned uh, each year, we can now look at longitudinal studies, long-term mentoring programs, 
We're currently monitoring 17 startups there, 12 of which which have got working prototypes and several have already gone to market. And I'll talk about a couple of case studies in a moment. When I was there in November, I took 16 foreign business speakers from around the world to run our biggest ever startup festival there. 네, 뭐 이후 매해 긴 호흡이 컨설팅으로 구성된 미시적 프로그램도 진행을 하고 있고요. 뭐몇 개는 프로토타입도 만들었고 시장으로 이미 진출한 것도 있다고 하네요. So one technique we like to use is called the business model canvas, which is a tool to map out all aspects of a business model or a startup idea. By working closely with the participants and forcing them to consider all the aspects of their idea, we can help them to ascertain if their startup ideas are viable or not. Uh, we sometimes see business ideas which are honestly too ambitious. Uh, people have this idea for a grand finished product on day one, uh, which will be produced nationwide. And we, we try to bring people down from that a bit and encourage them to iterate and start small and grow bigger. Prototyping, getting customer feedback, and so on. Oh, 네, 비즈니스 캔버스 모델을 통해서 비용, 비용 구조, 수익성 등을 고려한 사업 모델을 구성하거나 프로토타입 제작 피드백 피봇을 하는 그런 문화에 대해 다루기도 합니다. So, since we trained this initial group of MBA students overseas, they went back to North Korea and they've taught the techniques that they learned to other North Korean entrepreneurs, which means that when we arrive on site, we find that a lot of the teams have already well developed their ideas and some have prototypes to, uh, to demonstrate to us. And then at the end of each workshop, we do it like a sort of a uh, competition and we have the we we select the best idea from the whole festival. Oh, 네. 워크숍 전에 해외 MBA 참여 학생들이 현지에서 기초적인 테크닉을 전파해서 워크숍 본 워크숍 때는 아이디어가 이미 발전되어 있는 상태이기도 합니다. So this is um, this is one of the entrepreneurs. He's pitching. It's a new food product, uh, vacuum sealed green peppers for fresh food in winter. I, I appreciate it probably doesn't seem very advanced compared to some of the startups here in South Korea, but remember he's, he's targeting the domestic market and he's working with the technology he has. So he's built this prototype um, and during the workshop he worked with his mentor uh, to develop some basic revenue and profit predictions. 네, 겨울에도 보존이 가능한 진공포장 청고추 시장 피칭을 하고 있는데요. 나만의 비할 바는 아니지만 북한 내 시장 대상으로 기본 수익 비용 예측까지 맞췄습니다. Another couple of examples. Uh, on the left, we have uh, an application of startup techniques to an existing company. This is a, a, a tea company, a, a med medicinal tea, and they were hoping to improve their sales figures. So we brought in marketing and branding experts, and we realized that they really didn't know who they were selling to. It was a very vague product. So we, we then encouraged them to rebrand, and they've since pivoted, and they're now focusing on the top end of the market. Uh, on the right, we have uh, Mr. Kim. He's an engineer. Um, he came to a Chosen Exchange workshop in 2016, and we trained him on customer feedback. So he went out, he did some market research amongst potential buyers in factories, and he found that many of the potential customers rely on a lot of old machinery, and it's very hard to get spare parts. Now, of course, North Korea has very poor electricity supplies, so you can imagine if there's a surge in the electricity, you can knock out all of your machines and your factory stops. So what he did is he came up with this prototype, which he's holding in his hands. It's a surge protector for electric motors. Uh, he got good initial feedback. I think he's selling them for about $12, which is quite competitive against Chinese alternatives. And I saw him again last year. Uh, this is his third year of doing it, and he's now paid off his initial, his initial capital expenditure, and he's turning a profit. 네, 왼쪽은 기존 판매되던 차를 건강차로 리브랜딩한 사례고요. 오른쪽은 현장의 의견을 수렴을 해서 공장의 생산량을 떨어뜨리는 어, 전류 급증 현상을 개선하는 장비, 그러니까 서지 보호기를 만들어서 성공한 사례입니다. So. Whilst those success stories are doing well, um, 
I, I, we shouldn't forget the enormous challenges which hold back potential startups in North Korea. The first is profit retention or confidence in profit retention. Until just a few years ago, even using the word profit was a bit of a dirty word. Uh, so we, we really want to see the legal framework surrounding this tested more thoroughly. If firms aren't confident that contracts will be honored by the judges and the judiciary, they won't take the risks necessary to make the startup succeed. It's also extremely difficult for startups to function internationally when your directors don't have access to the internet and they can't make international phone calls. At the moment, that's not a major factor because sanctions prevent uh, any legal, at least, international trading. Um, although, of course, this will be a problem in the future if and when they are allowed to trade again. Another factor is, of course, the lack of access to seed capital in investment. North Korea really doesn't have a proper banking system, um, certainly not one that will give small business loans. So a lot of startups are financed from private financiers, friends, and family. We often think of sanctions from the point of view of international firms trading with North Korean ones, but also they have, a, they have an effect on the startups in the country and whether they can make a success or not. For example, since 2017, sanctions have banned seafood imports and textile exports. These are areas of the economy which the state isn't closely involved in, so they're mainly populated by small private traders and entrepreneurs. And finally, I should also mention, of course, the issue of corruption. This goes both ways. Uh, on the negative, of course, it increases the costs and risks of starting a new business, but it can also allow small companies to circumvent bureaucracy by basically paying cash to get things moving. 네, 이들은 열심히 하고 있지만 지속적 수익 창출, 국제 전화와 인터넷, 투자금, 제재와 규제, 부패 등으로 어려움을 겪고 있습니다. Okay, it's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll test you on this after. Okay, looking to the future. Uh, we're, so we're looking at a few different projects to look at the gaps. I'll just talk you through them very briefly. The first one we'd like to do, we would like to build an incubator in Pyongyang. I don't know if they're quite ready for WeWork yet, but you know, a co-working space is, po is, is possible. Somewhere where entrepreneurs can work in close proximity to each other and share their ideas. So we're looking at a few sites. Uh, it's a slow process. Uh, it depends on a lot of funding and an awful lot of bureaucracy. For education and training, we're looking to capitalize on the recent increase in interests in our workshops and expand and do these bigger conference style events. We've also got some ideas for partnering with universities and building up a business library. And then finally, of course, it would make a massive difference if we could work with seed investment and financing. But of course, in the current sanctions environment, we're not able to do that. <웃음> 어, 장기적으로는 네, 어, 위협과 같은 협업 공간이나 뭐 인큐베이터 설립, 다양한 세션을 교육 제공, 뭐 대학과의 협업, 그리고 어, 비즈니스 데이터베이스를 쌓는다거나 시드 인베스트먼트를 하는 그런 협업 그런 것들을 바라고 있습니다. Okay, so looking to the future, we are um, one day one day, we would like to see uh, a future of joint startup creation between North and South Koreans. Uh, Singapore and South Korea are already working to strengthen their bilateral trade and investment. I think it was July last year, there was these landing pads were established to help small to medium enterprises and startups from Singapore in South Korea and South Korea in Singapore to help them find their way into the local infrastructure. It is just an idea, but it may be possible one day, if this program is a success and the international environment allows it, for this to be extended to North Koreans. 네, 또한 장기적으로 싱가폴과 한국의 협, 기존 협업 기제를 통해 한국과 북한의 공동 스타트업도 나타날 수 있었으면 합니다. There's still a lot of work to be done, and ultimately, whether we succeed or fail, and whether the startup scene in North Korea flourishes or dies, will be governed by factors beyond the control of Chosun Exchange, or indeed, the entrepreneurs we work with. 
But if the diplomatic situation improves, then we see reason for cautious optimism. And until then, all we can do is to do what we can to prepare the small businesses there and the entrepreneurs with the skills they need to make successful startups in the domestic market. 네, 외교적 고착 상태 교착 상태가 사라지면 언젠가 북한의 스타트업 생태계도 좋아질 것이라 생각하고요. 그때까지 할수 있는 역량 강화 활동을 열심히 하려 합니다. 감사합니다. 야, 네, 시간이 4분 남았습니다. 그래서 지금 올라오는 질문들을 지금 급하게 한번 해볼 텐데요. 어, so I'm going to ask you some questions. So, um, first, uh, in North Korea, do they use the word startup? And do they get the notion of, the st of startup? They do use the word startup. Um, they, and they do get the idea of it because it's something that a lot of people are doing anyway. Uh, like just by, by being small traders, by sp starting small businesses, it's something they're doing anyway, yes. 네, 뭐 알아들으신 분들 알아들으셨겠지만, 네, 어쨌든 조그마한 뭐 그런 사업들 어쨌든 하긴 하기 때문에 그 스타트업이라는 단어를 일단 이해도 하고요, 실제로 쓰기도 한다고 합니다. Uh, Can I just just add to that? Um, of course. They, we use the word startup in our in our presentations. It's something that they've started using, but we found that there's a lot of business terms that we would use that just simply don't have a translation, um, and it's quite difficult for our translators to to work these out because they're just not concepts that have been included in any business textbooks. 어, 그래서 그쪽에서만 뭔가 사용되는 뭐 그런 단어가 그, 그런 용어가 있어가지고 조금 이렇게 번역하기 어려운 그런 거기 현지 용어 같은 것들도 쓰는 것 같습니다. 네. 어 그리고 아, 다행히 영어로 된 질문이 있네요. 한번 해보겠습니다. So what are the most common industries that North Korean in entrepreneurs participate in? So um, behind you. <웃음> um, so we see a lot of work in sort of restaurants, cafes, those sorts of things. Uh, we've seen, I showed you a couple of examples of gadgets and small uh, technology items. Uh, lots of things in cosmetics um, and small uh, products like that. And I actually have a book with me, um, the, uh, which anyone is happy <laughs> to look at, which is a catalog of uh, small, um, uh, yeah, small business items from, from North Korea. So very happy if anyone would like to have a look at that. 네, 아까 예시 잠깐 설명드린 것도 있고요. 그리고 뭐 카페나 레스토랑 같은 그런 것들도 하고 뭐 아니면 조그마한 뭐 그런 기구들이나 아니면 화장품 같은 것들도 있는데요. 자세한 예시를 보고 싶으시면 저기 지금 책자 있으시니까 쉬는 시간에 보시면 될것 같습니다. 자, 지금 이제 2분 남았고요. 어, 이제 또 제일 많이 올라온 질문이 엑시 플랜 관련된 건데요. So, um, do North Korean startups have exit plan and um, how do you get compensated from your investment just in exchange? So Chosen Exchange do not invest in the country. We, we wouldn't be allowed to. That would be against sanctions. Oh, okay. So we are, we are there to facilitate the learning uh -huh. uh, for, the, um, for the North Korean entrepreneurs. So we are, it's a voluntary run organization. We, we don't invest directly. Uh, but you do um, spend your resources uh, in North Korea. So how do you? Well, insofar as we visit, but we're, we're not there investing in the companies. We're there just to, just to uh, teach the business skills to the, to the entrepreneurs. Okay, and um, well, it was the first question, but um, do North Korean startups have exit plan? Um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, it's, it's difficult because they're, they're, learning, they're learning the startup idea. Um, there's a lot of people who have come up through sort of just businesses that they've come up with their ideas themselves. They've never really been trained in any startup methodology. So a lot of them are making it up as they go along. And that's why when I talked about the business model canvas, okay. so trying to give them some structure to this thinking. 진행되면서 지금 계속 뭔 상황을 보려고 하고요. 그리고 일단 비즈니스 캔버스 모델이나 그런 것들을 통해서 점점 이렇게 발전시켜 나갈 수 있도록 도와드린다고 하네요. 야, 네. 어휴, 이게 벌써 40분이네요. 이게 좀뭐 질문이 되게 많이 올라왔는데 그건 쉬는 시간에 좀 개인적으로 한번 여쭤봐 주셔도 될것 같습니다. 이렇게 동그란 그룹이 생기지 않을까 싶네요. 네, 아, 첫 번째 세션 이렇게 열띠게 잘 끝났고요. 어, 이제 쉬셔야죠. <웃음> 네. 그래서 일단 올해는 어쩌다 보니까 좀 아시아 특집으로 구성이 되었는데요. 뭐 지리적으로 가깝지만 네. 
어, 지금 잠깐만. 네. 서로 다른 스타트업 생태계를 비교할 수 있었던 자리였을 것 같습니다. 일단 바, 발표해주신 이한 베네님께 큰 박수 한번 부탁드리겠습니다.